I am so excited to be here today with Fabiola Garza, the author and illustrator of the story of John Paul II, a boy who became Pope. Welcome, Fabiola. We're thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I love this book, and I love the way it looks and the way it feels, and it's got such beautiful illustrations that I, I, I just would love for you to tell our viewers what the inspiration was behind this beautiful book. Well, actually, my last year in college, I took a class called Picture and Word, where they were teaching us how to write and illustrate children's books. And for my final, um, I decided I wanted to write about a saint that I really loved. And at the time, I was reading about John Paul II's life, and I thought, how amazing it was <laughs> and I was like I couldn't believe everything he went through and everything he had right. to do and everything that God did in his life so I just decided that it would make a great story and a story that kids needed to know so I just decided to do that for my final project and back then it was just you know a little project for school so and that was five years ago oh my goodness <laughs> that's beautiful and now do you have a special devotion to John Paul II you mentioned a little I bit. do I do mm -hmm. I mean my family uh, they're from Mexico they love John Paul II and so he's always been in the background of my life mm -hmm. but especially during the college years when I started to really learn about him I I don't know he just really held me up during that last year and even I just pray a lot to him and ask for his intercession and he's just been a very good companion in my life. <laughs> That's beautiful, yeah. I mean, I, I love John Paul II too. I think he was such a popular pope that this is bound to be such a popular book because it's a story that we aren't all familiar with. We all know about his papacy and what happened from that moment, but your book ends where he's becoming pope. Exactly. Right? I feel that a lot of kids, <laughs> they just don't get to hear about how they became who they were and um, it's hard for kids to connect when you know the saints are older than they are and they don't realize that they were kids just like them and so I just thought that that they would be very appreciative to to be able to read that. That's a beautiful so. idea. Did you pray to John Paul II while you were working? Oh on absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Actually it, it, I had to illustrate it and edit it in a couple months. Wow. So I was praying every day, every day. I actually had a big poster in front of my computer um, to just remind me who I was making this for. So, wow, wow, <laughs> yeah. that is beautiful. And I, I mean, I don't know. It, there are so many pages in here. I can't believe you just said that you did this in a couple of months because this is so much work. And <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of work. I'm not an artist myself, but I recognize the, the work hours that have been put into this. So that's really a labor of love. What are you hoping that? parents and children as they read this book. What kind of message are you hoping they'll take away from it? Well, there's one particular line that's repeated over and over again in the book, and it's, who do you love the most? And throughout really difficult times, I find that that's a very helpful question to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so in the story, um, the, the, the boy that becomes John Paul II um, asks himself that question several times. And it's sort of, uh, a way for the child and the parent to ask themselves, well, who do I love most? Like, who do I wake up for in the morning? Why mm -hmm. do I do everything I do? And so I'm hoping that they will think of God and Jesus and uh, how they can always have him in their lives whenever something happens. That's so. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and I bet John Paul II is, as a new saint in the church, is just looking at this project and so proud of the work that you've created here. Maybe you can share a little bit about how, you know, as an artist, how, how does your faith inspire your work, or how does your work inspire your faith, or how does that I think, dynamic I think, work? I mean, just the fact that, that when you make a piece of art, all of you goes in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very Catholic, so, yeah. so it immediately I just feel that, that the, the wonder and the, the, the love that I have for the God's creation just immediately goes into it. So whether I'm doing something that's very specifically Catholic, like this book that's mm -hmm. about a saint, or if I'm just writing like a fairy tale or something like that, um, I think at its core it has a Christian message, even if it's not implicit. So, so you're just kind of expressing, because your faith, I can see it, <laughs> it's <laughs> part of who you are. It's such an integral part of who you are as a person that you find that just naturally comes out in your work. It does, it does. So I always try to instill just a sense of wonder and of just love of, of God's creation. That's yeah. great. And now this is published by? Pauline Books and Media, and okay. you can actually get uh, books there at their uh, online so Paul books okay, and Books Okay, they're available now? In they the are. They're available now. You can also get them on my website, which is fabulagarza.com. But they've been wonderful. They did such a beautiful job with the printing. You know, it's, they just, did. it's just a beautiful book to hold and to feel mm -hmm. and just a, a real treasure that I know that people are going to want to share with their kids. So 
since I love this book so much, I want to <laughs> know what your next book is going to be. Are you going to do a series of saints? What are we doing? What? Oh, yeah. well, it's going to be really exciting. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm starting a new job, so I'm waiting to get settled in with that. But um, yeah, there's something in the works. Yeah, That's great. yeah, we d we're not sure. We're thinking Mother Teresa, perhaps. Oh, perhaps. a great companion we're to not JP sure, too. But it's exciting to just to be talking about a new project, mm -hmm. um, just because it was very exciting to work on this. That's great. And now I know you're starting a new job in Disney. A I am. Position, so <laughs> I am. <laughs> That's very exciting for you right now. It's going to be very exciting. Do you find that you know if, how do you feed your creativity? How do you keep it alive and fresh? Because I know I'm I'm not an artist in the way that you are, but I'm I'm a writer, and I know that that's something. I sometimes struggle with where well it's funny because mm. a lot of time it's it is actually from reading and from books like I love young adult novels mm -hmm. and kids books and animated movies I see them all <laughs> I just saw Frozen that came out oh I so just good. saw that beautiful so I, thought of, I thought of Frozen when I was looking at your illustrations because they're, they're beautiful in a similar way yeah <laughs> so I I don't know I, I think I think anything and everything that I just look at mm -hmm. sometimes uh it can it can inspire something. So even being on this set, I'm like, oh look at the beautiful colors, I like that green. I'll use <laughs> it in the next illustration. Like I don't know. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And so, who are some of the other saints that you have devotions to? Who else has helped you in your creative oh, life? Oh, there's um, Saint Francis de Sales. He is he has a wonderful book called Introduction to the Devout Life, and I absolutely love him. I think he's such a gentle mentor, and I I really love him. Uh, uh, I think it's Blessed Chiara Luce. Mm -hmm. She's she's lovely. Um, I was introduced to her when I went to World Youth Day in Spain a few years ago. Oh, beautiful! And her story is just lovely. Uh, a friend of mine wants me to do a book on her, and uh, Mother Teresa as well. Mm -hmm. she, she's such a wonderful saint. I'm reading one of her books as well. And the theme I'm picking up here are these are like recent and contemporary saints that mm -hmm. we can really relate to because sometimes I think, and you mentioned this earlier, was. That you know, when we're teaching our kids about their faith and we're teaching our kids about the saints, that sometimes we think of them as these statues or these faraway yes. people. And part of what I love about this book is that your faith comes alive because this is a real person and it was a real boy just like me and a kid who experienced yep. these things that all kids do. So that's really a beautiful message. I think that comes through very clearly in your book. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I I, it's just, I think for me, just knowing that they were just people like us and that they struggled and it was very hard, but it's a, really about what. God's grace does to transform your life no matter what. So. Beautiful. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today, Fabiola Garza, uh, author you. of The Story of John Paul II, A Boy Who Became Pope, available from Pauline Books and Media.